Well, it's like a cowboy move. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, it's me Mackenzie, aka Costume Kens, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing probably one of my most exciting videos ever, and that's going to be showing you how I made this Barbie western slash cowgirl outfit from the new movie coming out next summer starring Margot Robbie and directed by Greta Gerwig. As a cosplayer, aspiring costume designer, huge Margot Robbie fan, and Barbie lover, I cannot put into words how excited I am. Basically, I know that when this movie comes out, it's gonna be my whole personality. It already is, and it's already becoming a problem. This video is just gonna be focusing on the costume making process because she's just so special. She deserves her own video. Without further ado, here we go. So I know the movie doesn't come out until next summer, and I'm only going off of like seven to 10 really good paparazzi pics on references for this outfit, but I just knew that I had to make it and there was nothing that could stop me. I think overall, I'm very proud of how it came out. So let's get right into dyeing the fabric. I'm pre-washing the fabric I'm using, which is a white stretch denim, which I'm gonna dye pink with this Fuchsia Rit all-purpose dye. I just heated it up and I'm dyeing it in my sink because I have a lot of fabric that I need to cover and make sure that I'm able to make sure it dyes evenly. So mixing it around until I get the desired color and then I'm just gonna wash it out a couple times to make sure the fabric doesn't bleed. Usually I like to play it fast and loose when I do my costume designs, but honestly this one I put my most patience and time and effort into and I've never made something that's as tailored as this. This is basically a suit. And here we go with the construction. So I patterned it out first on my mannequin and made the pieces a lot bigger than I needed to just to make sure that I could tailor it to myself perfectly because the mannequin is not the same shape as me. So I'm just cutting these out and ironing them because there were a lot of significant creases in there. Then I have a lining fabric, which I am pinning to my denim. See all that here? And then I'm just gonna sew a stay stitch around the edge so I don't have any slippage or bubbles in the fabric once I start to sew all the pieces together. So I'm starting with the back pieces. I'm just sewing those together and then I'm gonna use this denim vest as a reference for how I want it to fit because I like the fit of this vest. So I'm just measuring on the edge where I want to attach the two pieces on the sides. And I pretty much just did that same process for the whole thing to figure out where I wanted to line up the pieces and reference the pictures that I had from paparazzi pics to get the seams in the right area. I then sewed the shoulders together and did a little fit check to make sure all the lines were showing up in the right area and decided that I was then going to fold over the front and neck seams and then just sew that together and I am going to be using a pink thread that matches the color of my fabric so it seems seamless. Then following it up with another fit check where I am deciding if I have to take in the sides and the back which I definitely did and then we have to do something about these sleeves. So I'm using the same vest again to figure out where I want the sleeves to start and just cutting along this edge leaving enough room to fold it over in on itself and then close that up. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just sewing that along the inside of the armholes, trying it on again and figuring out where I want the vest to start. So it's going to be a V-shaped seam. I'm just folding that under after I tried it on and marked where I wanted it to go with the pins. I'm then working on patterning out the yoke and I'm just using a muslin fabric in white, which I'm lucky I can see through because the pink fabric is very visible and you can see I'm just drawing directly on it where I want the edges to be. And then I'm gonna take that, cut it out, and then do a pretty generous seam allowance on the edge and cut that out of the desired fabric. The next step is obviously to iron it because we want everything to be looking super pressed and super tailored. So as annoying as it is, we have to press all of the seams even before we sew them. And then look at this amazing fabric. This is actually metallic leather that I got on Etsy, and I'm going to be using it for the details on the vest and for the stars on the butt. 
So the leather goes in a couple spots on the vest. It's going to go on the space between the yoke and the rest of the vest. So I'm just pinning that down. I'm being careful to use wonder clips, not pins, because it'll leave marks. And then I'm very carefully sewing that down. Again, clipping it to the yoke piece, and then I'm gonna sew that down on my sewing machine and cut away the excess once I have that in place. And then here's what that looks like. I sewed the one seam on the bottom down where the leather is, and then I just pinned it. So I'm just gonna make sure that everything lays flat and looks so pristine and tailored. And here I am sewing that down along the edges. Then next up, we have to make buttonholes to make this a functional vest. So I'm just using my buttonholer on my sewing machine, and you can see I have the silver button in there to guide how big I want it to be. And then I'm just hammering the button in on the adjacent side, and here's how that looked before I went and tailored it even more. Then the vest has grommets along the neckline, so I am painstakingly hammering all of these in, equally spaced apart on the neckline. Then that's going to be filled with a ribbon. So this is the ribbon I got on Amazon. I, it's obviously too big, but it's the right color. So I'm ironing it down and then I'm going to be sewing it so it stays the right shape and doesn't crinkle uh, once I put it through the grommet holes. Next up, we're making the pockets. So I made a pattern and traced it onto a scrap of the fabric. And then I just folded the edges in on itself to make it a little bit more crisp looking and then sewed that down before going ahead and sewing more of the leather to the top of the pocket for a nice trim, just like the yoke. And then here's what it looks like with those pinned down. Again, they're mini pockets, but they actually are functional. So here I am sewing that down again and just adding it to the vest. And then additionally, there are two little stars on each side of the pockets. So I'm cutting that out with an X-Acto knife and then I'm going to be going very, very, very slowly and hand cranking my sewing machine to attach these stars to the vest in the pocket itself. So we're starting off our pants journey by using this pattern that I'm going to modify. I chose this one because it has seams in all the right places. So each pant leg is broken down into four shapes cutting them out and I'm starting to pin them all along. It's a lot of pinning because we have a lot of pieces to put together in this pants puzzle. So I'm just sewing those down. I'm trying to keep the seams as straight as possible. I did cut these way too big for me because I knew that I was, especially with modification, I was gonna have to make a lot of changes and it's better to have extra fabric so you don't have to cut again. So here's that all sewn together. And I'm just folding the edges in on itself so I can take the seam up the middle and attach the butt to the other side of the butt. And speaking of the butt, since the two seams on the back of her pants seem to come together at the top, I am taking it in very much and on this angle so you can see once that's done. And when I try them on, you'll see that the two back lines converge like a triangle. To get these fitting correctly, I had to do many fit checks. Here's me with them on inside out, just pinning where I need to take the seams in to make sure that everything lines up. And I wanna make sure that the seams down the front are going vertically and not tapering towards one way. And look, you can see the butt seam is a triangle now. And then another key detail about her outfit is she has these accent seams that are just there for looks. Maybe they're functional in her outfit, but for mine, it's just for looks. And I'm using a purple metallic thread to do this and just going about a half an inch away from every seam. I did this on the vest as well. And here's, you can see what that looks like. Next up, I'm going to be hemming the waist. So I'm just making sure that I have the accent stitch on where this is gonna be at the right area once I took the waist down to where I wanted it. Then additionally, she has a V front in her pants. I am making it a faux functioning one and just put a piece of fabric underneath and sewed those edges along to make the V. This will then have grommets added to it and then I'm going to put the laces through and it looks like this. For the butt stars, I was very concerned with getting a perfect star shape. So I cut two options out of my Cricut and decided I didn't like either of them. So then I went and modified this one to be the exact size and shape that I wanted. So just using my X-Acto knife to go around and this is what we came up with. 
Then I'm cutting this out of the leather with the X-Acto knife again, very carefully and making sure I have crisp lines because this is going to be sewn directly onto the pants. Once I had those shapes cut out, I'm just figuring out where it needs to be attached so it doesn't end up in the wrong spot. Once I had the placement figured out, I used tape to tape it down and I am very carefully sewing it to the pants. To pattern the flare bottoms of the pants, we unfortunately have to do some math. So I started out by doing a half circle for each side, so each ended up being a full circle and that was way too big. So if you want to closely follow this math, pause here and look, but it's basically you go and measure from where you want it to attach above the knee, figure out that length from knee to floor, and then use that as your radius for the circle that you're going to create. And then I kind of just cut out that circle and took it in as much as I needed it to until I had the correct thickness for the flare. And although I did not line the top of the pants, I am lining the flares because I want them to have some structural support to it and be a little bit thicker. So I just sewed that down and here I am. I'm going to be turning the flare inside out and putting it up the pant leg. I've marked with pins where it's going to attach and then I'm just going to carefully pin that down and sew the edge around until I like the placement. Then the next step will be to hem the bottom just so we have a clean edge and that's how you attach the flare. So the finishing touch for the outfit is adding the metallic stars that she has all over the top of the vest and on the bottom of the pants. So I took very careful thought and planned out exactly how many stars I was going to need of each kind by looking and analyzing a bunch of pictures and counting the different kinds of stars she had. I then designed them all on my iPad and I'm going to be using my Cricut to cut them out and then I just have to very painstakingly weed out the vinyl that's not to be used and then individually line up where I want each of the stars, then iron them on, and voila, we have our finished product. If anyone would be interested in buying these files from me, I'd be happy to put them on my Etsy store for download, then you can cut them out with your Cricut too. Fun fact, this bandana that I'm wearing as a shirt <laughs> was actually supposed to be the bandana I was going to be wearing for this costume. My friend Lindsay had them custom made for us from a seller on Etsy, which I can link below to. The color that I ended up dyeing it just didn't match perfectly with this. It actually looks pretty close to my lipstick, which is nice. After spending what felt like $180, it might have been less. It probably was less, but that's like a number that stuck in my head for some reason on white denim that I then, then dyed pink, I was really married to that color. So unfortunately, although this shirt is, <laughs> this shirt, although this bandana is perfect and designed so perfectly, it just didn't look right when I had the colors that I had going. So I ordered a pink bandana on Amazon, but it didn't end up being the right color. So I'm using the same fuchsia writ dye to dye this bandana to be as close to the outfit as possible. Then I designed a bandana fabric on my iPad, cut it out with my Cricut, and I'm going to be ironing that directly to the bandana. It's not ideal, but it works enough for my purposes. The last step is to be making the hat. I bought a white felt hat on Amazon. It was like $15. I'll link it in my storefront. Then I just added the same ribbon that I used for the details on the outfit, and I am individually gluing on a bunch of these rhinestones around the edge of the hat to match how she has hers. And it took a long time, but it was worth it. I did burn myself a few times, so I would recommend using gloves or something to prevent yourself from getting burnt too. It would be my dream to wear this to the premiere. So looking at you, Warner Brothers. So I made this whole outfit over the course of one month to wear to New York Comic Con which I already have a video of on my channel already from the vlog. You can see it up here. 
Um, but it went over really well and everyone was just so, so, so excited for Barbie. A franchise that is so universally loved. Like I couldn't make it a few feet without someone saying, oh my gosh, Barbie. Like everybody knew what I was and the movie hasn't even had a trailer drop yet. So the fact that just based on that little bit of like nuggets of information and few pictures we were able to get when when that was all dropped this past summer, the fact that people knew who I was, like overwhelmingly everyone was like, oh, it's it's Barbie, was crazy. Except for the one guy who thought it was Charmaine. But to be fair, it she would wear this. Okay, well that wraps it up. So thank you guys so much for watching. I truly cannot express enough how excited I am for this movie. I'm waiting for more things to be leaked so I can make all the other costumes because that's just, I mean, that's how I'm gonna have to get through the waiting period. It's like, I know it's less than a year, but it's kind of a long time. But anyways, if you have any questions, just feel free to comment them down below or you can DM me on Instagram at Costume Kens. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can come back and see more Barbie content coming in the future and more cosplay content in general because that's what I do.